In today's video I'll be using uh, following uh, materials. Sketchbook uh, Fabriano, mixed media paper, 300 uh, GSM, this is quite thick paper, A4 uh, format, it stands uh, a lot of uh, media, watercolor, ink, today I'll be using uh, ink and uh, watercolor. For uh, ink drawing I'll be using uh, this deep pen uh, with this uh, nib. With uh, this uh, waterproof ink um, made by um, Roren and Clean Gner. It's a uh, waterproof ink. Um, I'll be using an HB pencil, a ruler and um, a small uh, set of uh, watercolor. As a reference uh, photo, I'll use uh, this photo I took um, recently of this uh, shop front of uh, local library. This is uh, the front of um, the building. Uh, if you'd like to follow along uh, drawing with me, you can find um, the picture uh, in a link uh, in the description of this uh, video. I framed uh, this uh, paper with this uh, square uh, ruler. I put uh, the edges and inside edges I uh, traced uh, this uh, rectangular uh, angles and uh, made this uh, rectangular shape inside of the paper. Now um, I'll be using uh, the edge of the ruler to uh, trace some uh, main uh, lines just to guide me. There are uh, a few parallel lines and um, after I'll uh, do these uh, lines I'll uh, start with uh, the ink. So let me try doing the ink orc. I'm starting uh, using um, the deep pen. I'm trying on a separate piece of paper to see how the ink flows. Now uh, I'll do the parallel lines. Starting um, from above to not uh, smudge the ink uh, while it's still uh, wet. I am not using um, quite straight lines. Um, I like this uh, sketchy feeling of uh, a drawing. Now I am uh, doing the windows on the upper part. They are perpendicular to that um, parallel line I did. Moving below, there is um, another parallel line. The texture of this paper is uh, a bit uh, rough, but uh, it's uh, anyway uh, suitable for uh, ink drawing with uh, this uh, thick uh, nib above these lines I'll start drawing um, actually writing uh, the typography for a library biblioteca in Romanian and uh, starting what appealed about uh, this um, um, view or a reference for my sketch is actually the um, this old-fashioned um, font. It's quite old uh, library. It's 
So I'm doing the letters, each one. I might not fit all as they are, but um, I'm doing my best to keep the proportions. So now I'm doing only the outline of the letters and um, later on I will uh, fill in some shading inside of the letters. This C is a quite, quite uh, thick, so not all uh, letters are equal. Now moving on to next uh, stage. So uh, this drawing evolves from above to below, um, starting with uh, some uh, large windows and the door. I will um, invent some parts uh, from my imagination because uh, this view is a bit um, boring because it doesn't have uh, a lot of details but uh, since this is a library I can put shelves of uh, books. Now keeping um, as reference the pencil lines, I can um, uh, easily follow and uh, draw parallel and perpendicular lines, still not uh, drawing them with a ruler. Now the doors, I will uh, draw the details inside the doors. In the windows uh, I can see some uh, reflections of the buildings that are on the opposite uh, side of the um, library. There are some tall buildings. So I'll draw the reflections. There are some trees. I'll do this abstract shape of trees and the buildings. some windows not following exactly but uh, just to suggest that there are some buildings reflected now I can fill uh, in these uh, spaces with uh, bookshelves. I'll do some uh, shelves and uh, we'll fill in freely with the uh, shapes of the books, the whole um, space inside the 
of the windows. Now I can vary the lines, the thickness of books, the how tall, how short they are, to make more interesting uh, this uh, pattern shape. It's like a texture, something um, repetitive, but it's uh, relaxing to fill in such um, spaces I'm going quite uh, often to this library once a few weeks uh, I'm borrowing some books uh, I don't manage uh, all the time to read them on time and uh, sometimes I uh, extend my uh, duration of uh, borrowing because I like uh, reading uh, more books at the same time I uh, don't manage to, to finish them on time. Still, uh, it's quite uh, inspiring to see a lot of books there. Especially I like uh, borrowing uh, books for my daughters. And uh, I flip through them to find inspiration in the illustration. Um, for children's books, they are quite inspiring. And I study all those drawings and illustrations and comics and graphic novels. Here I see a plant, I'll do it larger than it is in uh, reality to fill in. Uh, and to make more interesting this uh, space, I'll draw the pot and uh, I'll make um, the same on the opposite uh, side. I'll draw the same here a few shelves of uh, books I never tried uh, drawing with um, dip pen and ink on this kind of rough uh, paper but uh, it is uh, satisfying. I thought uh, it would be much scratchier. Sometimes uh, drawing with a dip pen on a rough paper is uh, quite uh, difficult. It's um, a bit of friction between the nib and the paper. These days it is quite hot in Bucharest, there are uh, 40 degrees outside at the night also the temperature is very high, there are 25 in the morning but uh, in, at the night it is 
very hot and it's difficult to to sleep yet uh, for the last uh, two nights we let the air conditioner on because it was impossible to to sleep this is already second week with such high temperatures and um, it's quite uh, uncomfortable during the day also we are uh, I remember mm, in the last years I I think we used air conditioner only a few days uh, per summer but this summer we um, are using it more often I tried to not use it but uh, it's difficult to work and uh, to sleep uh, it makes me very sluggish and uh, sleepy during the day and um, it drains me of energy it's yeah it's very difficult i i can't uh, imagine how uh, people in um, a much uh, warmer uh, climates how they manage when they have uh, this kind of temperature all um, the year around this must be um, quite difficult maybe their bodies and uh, metabolism and uh, everything they uh, they are used with this kind of uh, temperature but I find it uh, quite um, uncomfortable I think now I'd rather prefer much colder temperature but uh, I'm not sure and the um, on the um, these window panes on the on all the door there are some signs I'll uh, put some announcements paper some posters and uh, different kind of uh, advertising and uh, announcements and I'll put uh, some papers on the windows now I'll do the hinges of the door on both sides the knob of the door and um, I'll do some shading for the lettering so they are uh, three-dimensional uh, objects so I'll uh, add uh, some shadow parts to the letters I see some texture so I'll uh, do some abstract um, texture mimicking the structure of the concrete um, decoration I started um, borrowing books from the library when I realized I don't have um, enough space in my home to add uh, more books so I kept buying and buying now uh, my bookshelves are full and uh, I just uh, don't have um, enough space to add more books so I thought this might be a um, good solution just to borrow and uh, to read them and uh, yeah if I'd like to read once again I can borrow I don't think people are much um, 
interested these days in borrowing books uh, you can read virtually everywhere on your phone there are these ebooks yeah I have uh, one but I prefer reading on uh, paper I love the sensations of holding an actual book uh, in your hands the texture of paper the the smell of paper and the, the sensation of turning pages and see the progress of your reading is uh, much more satisfying than on a Kindle or ebook I, I cannot see uh, so obvious the progress yeah there is a bar below the page where you can see but uh, it's not the same as holding uh, a book uh, an actual uh, paper book yeah I think um, the ink part uh, is uh, done and I'll move to the watercolor part. I let uh, this one to dry a bit before applying the watercolor. I think the ink drawing dried uh, sufficiently. I um, erased with this putty rubber uh, the pencil lines and uh, now I'll uh, begin uh, coloring in. This is uh, watercolor set 12 colors made by uh, white knights quite nice colors and uh, not uh, so uh, expensive i think um, they uh, offer a great value for money i'll start uh, as well from the top i'll use this water brush so uh, from the top of the front shop the reflections of um, of the sky on the, uh, on the window panes so I'll use this diluted blue I'm squeezing this water brush to make a light blue so starting filling in this um, window panes the uh, color uh, shouldn't be evenly uh, colored for all the windows because uh, it varies so this is the beauty of uh, watercolor because they um, offer um, this um, variation of lightness and um, gradation uh, so it's not like uh, painting with markers when you have a flat even color watercolors uh, offer this expressive um, tool of uh, having variation I think uh, the beauty of uh, watercolor is uh, this unexpected behavior you don't know uh, how it will uh, act in the end now uh, moving on below I think I'll use uh, a grayish color for the front of the building but it's uh, sm um, I think uh, it's uh, a bit uh, brownish so I'll use this uh, burnt sienna this burnt sienna and I'll uh, as well I will uh, dilute to make it very light I think I'll use a bit of this is might be burnt umber yeah I think it's better and I'll mix with um, the leftover of the blue it makes a uh, quite a nice gray like this 
So I mixed here three colors. Uh, burnt Umber, uh, Burnt Sienna and uh, leftover of the blue. I'm not precious with this uh, mixing because it's grey on the old uh, this mud and um, what's on the palette we can use to make uh, grey so filling in this part of um, the building and making sure not to cover the lettering because I'd like to make them more colorful. I think um, on this image they are the most colorful part with this yellow. So I'll leave them at the end to um, fill in with some uh, pop in color. If I make a mistake, uh, I need to lift out this color using a tissue. It's an excellent tool for uh, watercolor. If you act quickly, you can um, you can uh, correct. I have this variation of color. It's uh, an interesting uh, pattern. The ink uh, pattern is still show through, which is uh, what I intended and uh, makes the structure of the wall more interesting. Now uh, moving on to the next part, we have a bluish color, it's not uh, very saturated, but it's uh, also grayish, so I'll use a lot of blue of this and add a little bit of burnt amber to mute it a bit, and uh, I'll dilute it. So this color I'll be using for um, the frames of the window, of the door, so the main part of the facade of this facade. <laughs> so this part, making sure to not uh, blend with the above color. I think the above color already dried. Now I'll be using uh, this the same color for the frame of the um, windows and uh, the door. This paper um, this is for mixed media, but it's very suitable for um, watercolor. It absorbs well. Watercolor, I'm um, satisfied with this uh, paper, even though it's not um, made of cotton, which is considered the golden standard of uh, uh, watercolor. Every watercolorist uh, uh, would tell you that uh, the most important part of uh, 
watercolor painting is the paper and it should be 100% cotton but it's quite expensive and um, yeah it uh, sometimes um, this might be a downside because um, if uh, the paper is expensive materials are expensive this might prevent you from experimenting and uh, feeling um, free of uh, creating so um, I think uh, less expensive materials uh, can uh, give you freedom of uh, not ruining the materials and uh, this be um, like a, a reason for not uh, uh, creating and uh, procrastinating waiting the perfect moment waiting uh, for the por perfect uh, occasion to create now I'll do I, I used this I haven't used these colors for a long time so I'm not sure what uh, what are they so uh, I'm trying them now I think I'll use this uh, burnt amber to continue the <coughs> the color of the building just below this part also I'll fill in some white spaces that uh, I left um, above since the color already dried I can um, now uh, fill in safely because it, otherwise if the color are still wet there is the risk of uh, blending and uh, if this is not the effect you are intending it's better to wait for the first layer to dry now I let the the same the uh, color be needs the lettering to make a bit of shadow and as well um, between them so these letters make a, a bit of shadow more beneath them rather than above them next step uh, will be to paint the reflection um, of the building and the trees on the opposite side of uh, this facade I'll be using uh, this light blue that I used uh, for the above windows I'll make uh, this much lighter and I'll fill in uh, this space between the buildings next one I'll color in these uh, trees with a muted green let me mix some green I think this green is quite um, saturated is a very nice green but uh, since this um, is a reflection we'll need some um, muted color I'll add some uh, burnt umber and make this uh, more realistic uh, green the same green uh, can be used for the plants inside of this uh, uh, building for the color of the buildings I'll use um, 
a gray mixture from uh, blue and burnt sienna. This makes um, quite natural uh, gray instead of using uh, premixed gray like paints gray or uh, pure black uh, diluted with water. And I'll use uh, a lot of water to make it uh, quite pale because um, there is a reflection of the sun which makes uh, this uh, less saturated. Next step, I'll um, paint the shelves of the books and I'll use um, a flat color for the um, first stage just to fill in uh, the whole space because uh, it would be quite daunting to paint uh, every book uh, one by one. Then I might add um, some variation uh, between these books. So uh, this uh, brush allows uh, covering uh, quite large surfaces very quickly. It's quite efficient for um, sketching on location or uh, urban sketching. And um, it's uh, very efficient because you don't need to carry around a separate container for water. This color cannot, uh, you can use um, a variation of color, it, sh uh, it uh, doesn't need to be a pure uh, flat color because uh, um, when you look uh, through a window inside of a building, uh, the light um, have uh, a variation and uh, it's uh, not uh, equally lighted so it's uh, okay to have uh, some variation of tone the only thing i think uh, on the below part of uh, these shelves i'll make uh, a bit darker because uh, um, the light uh, is uh, less uh, intense at that part of the the building now I'll move to the windows um, from the uh, door part. I'll use a gray mixture. Again, burnt umber and a bit of blue. I think this is my favorite gray uh, for urban setting. It's quite uh, easy to obtain it and uh, you can uh, get uh, a lot of variation. I wouldn't say this paper is 100% uh, cellulose, it acts like a cotton paper, mm, yet is uh, of good uh, quality, so it doesn't need to be 100% cotton. I think uh, the brand of the paper also matters. Fabriano has um, a quite uh, long history of making paper, so uh, you can uh, trust this brand, even though they uh, produce uh, a variety of types of paper, um, from cellulose to cotton paper. I think um, you can. Uh, use with confidence uh, as well um, cellulose uh, and the more expensive uh, cotton paper. For the sidewalk uh, I'll use uh, as well a grey and uh, I'll make it a bit dirtier because the sidewalk usually looks dirtier than 
the walls of a building so you can make a, a pool of uh, dirty colors you can mix everything on your palette and just uh, throw on your paper with this uh, water brush you can uh, dilute the, pep uh, the color directly on your paper squeezing the barrel of the um, this brush so this is another advantage of this uh, brush and uh, to make um, uh, a contrast between the sidewalk and this uh, like a step stone I'll um, make it much light lighter and fill in the same gray I'll be using to fill in some white spaces in um, inside of the view of the window now uh, moving on to the most fun part uh, to the um, focus of this uh, sketch um, I'll be coloring in the letters of uh, this uh, word Biblioteca, the library in Romanian and I'll be using um, uh, yellow ochre color without mix mixing and I'll use uh, directly saturated color and um, we'll fill in the lettering I love this uh, yellow because uh, it's not um, very bright it's uh, and uh, it looks more natural than uh, other types of yellow like cadmium yellow or lemon yellow or whatever as well I, um, I like uh, Naples yellow it's between a regular yellow and the yellow ochre but um, it's more uh, pastel like but yellow ochre yeah it's um, it's a must for every urban sketcher watercolor kit or yeah uh, whatever materials uh, I'll be using uh, I have this yellow no matter um, what kind of uh, uh, medium pencils uh, markers uh, I have um, I think uh, two of them just in case uh, I ran out of uh, yellow ochre so this is uh, one of my favorite uh, color and the uh, yeah, uh, all the masters used to this, uh, I think, um, in classical painting. I don't know, yellow ochre was uh, more affordable. Maybe they couldn't obtain other pure yellows and uh, it, it was something, uh, the cheapest uh, version of yellow that they couldn't afford at that time. I'm not sure um, about the history of this uh, color, but um, yeah, they used uh, on mural paintings, in portrait paintings, and uh, yeah, it's used in, uh, in portrait painting, it's a base color, you can mix it, you can make um, the, the color of the skin, uh, you can paint uh, uh, as well, uh, many buildings have this natural color. It resembles uh, clay or uh, sand, maybe. I don't know, it's uh, quite ubiquitous and um, I like it. And I'll use um, the same color to <coughs> make the. Uh, to, no to make it uh, not be so alone in the painting and I'll uh, use it to paint this spot and as well this um, signage And 
these papers, uh, announcements or advertising. Yeah, I'll use uh, on top of that gray. This uh, it's quite opaque. This yellow ochre and uh, it uh, it covers well other colors. Uh, uh, as well, I'll use it uh, to make some variation for the books on the shelves. If I use less water, it acts like uh, gouache. And uh, it gives you opaque um, prop. The last uh, step uh, for this uh, sketch, um, I'll be enhancing uh, contrast, adding uh, darker colors. Um, for example, um, um, to add contrast uh, to this window, I'll add another layer of uh, dark color and uh, we'll paint negative space of uh, this uh, signage on the window. So I have already this gray mixed here and I'll be using uh, to cover and to add uh, more contrast to the sketch. Another place where I would add more contrast uh, is uh, next to these uh, inside plants because uh, it seems quite flat and I'd like to, to make this to pop up uh, and uh, to see them more obviously. So I think uh, this uh, gray brownish color the more saturated uh, colors are um, now in uh, more focus another place where i would add the uh, darker color is above each shelf of uh, books to make them uh, as well to pop up if there is a uh, excess of water, it can be um, absorbed with the brush, just wiping off uh, of um, tissue paper, then uh, uh, dragging it over that uh, part. Another place where I would put a shadow part is uh, beneath this um, lettering part. It's a shadow uh, beneath uh, this uh, architectural element. Also uh, beneath the letters I can add uh, more uh, dark colored 
to to make uh, them in focus Also, I would like to make some dark accents for the books, so I'll use um, quite saturated color directly from the pen, and um, randomly I will uh, darken some books, and to make this uh, pattern of uh, books uh, aligned on a shelf. It's like um, brickwork, only that we have uh, here instead of bricks, we have um, this uh, vertical alignment of, uh, of uh, the books on the shell. So here uh, variation is uh, as well uh, very welcome, it's uh, quite pleasing to see this uh, variation of uh, tone and color. I might add the uh, burnt sienna as well, to make as well variation in color, not only in uh, value. This brush is uh, Excellent for making uh, such small details. So with the um, flat of the brush I uh, was able to cover large areas of color. Now with the tip of the brush uh, I can uh, make uh, more details and um, fine uh, tuning of this uh, sketch. It's not uh, very complicated to do this sketch, yet it's uh, quite satisfying. You can um, make uh, these uh, visual memories in your uh, sketchbook and uh, it's uh, satisfying to, to fill in this uh, pattern areas. Yeah, I think um, I've done with this sketch today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, you managed to sketch along. Again, if you would like to sketch it, you can find the photo in the link in the description of uh, this uh, video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.